Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at now the three major groups of functions that we've looked at. We're going to exclude polynomials from this group because polynomials is more a collection of other types of functions. But now that we have linear, exponential, and quadratic functions under our belt, we've seen the basics on quadratics, we've really studied linear and exponentials, let's compare them so that we have all this knowledge about linear, we have all this knowledge about exponentials, and we're gaining knowledge about quadratics. It's not just enough to have all that knowledge. You need to know when you apply that knowledge. So we need to be able to tell the difference between these three types. So we're going to look at it in three different ways. We're going to look at the graphs, we're going to look at the equations, and we're going to look at the tables for each of these three different classes. So first, uh, let's look at the graphs. So here we have graphs of parent functions uh, for linear exponentials and quadratics. Give me that stray mark there. And so what I want to do is help you see sort of the identifying features of each. So let's start with the linear function. And remember linear, the root of this is line. So when you look at the graph of a linear function, it will always be a straight line, no curves, just a line. Exponentials, the next one we talked about, they are not straight lines, but rather this curve that takes on kind of a banana shape. And they get really large really fast. And finally, our quadratic has that U shape that we called a parabola. And so I need you to be able to look at a graph and determine from its shape. Is it a straight line? Is it banana shaped? Or is it a parabola, a U shape? And you need to know which of these labels goes with which. Uh, and so on your notes, make sure you label which one is linear, which one's quadratic, which one's exponential, and be able to tell the difference from looking at them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch slides and have the equations show up above these. And what you need to be able to do with this information is I need you to be able to look at an equation and tell me just from the equation, no graph, is this linear, exponential, or quadratic. So let's look at linear first. And again, this is the linear one right here. It'll always be in some form of y equals x and then no exponents. Now, it could be the y and the x are on the same side if it's on standard form, but the key feature that's always going to be there with a linear function is the fact that there will be no exponents. When we look at an exponential function, you might guess from the name that in an exponential function there will in fact be exponents, but the neat thing about an exponential function and the thing that separates it from the rest is that in the exponent will be a variable. And this is what distinguishes it from other classes of equation, is that exponential functions have variable as an exponent. And with quadratics, we know from our study of polynomials that any time we're dealing with a quadratic polynomial, that it's going to be of degree 2, so what we're looking for in this is if the largest exponent is a 2. So I can look at an equation and see which of those fits. Are there no exponents? Is the x variable um, in an exponent? Or is the largest exponent 2? And based off of that information, I can categorize that equation as being linear, quadratic, or exponential. Now those two are pretty straightforward. I don't think you'll have a lot of trouble with that. It's just a few moments of memorization. The really tougher one is when we're looking at these in terms of a table. So I'm going to show you the primary and best way uh, to look for all three of these. And then I'm going to show you a secondary way to look for quadratics that is useful some of the time. So let's start again with our linear equation, which you should recognize from our equation with no exponents right up here. And what we're going to look for is the difference between each of the range values. And I'm just going to draw marks like this. And what we're going to do 
is we are going to calculate the difference between each of these. That means take the second one and subtract the first one. So 1 minus 0 is 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. 3 minus 2 is 1. And notice that these are all the same numbers. This is called having a constant, constant means unchanging, difference. Difference, meaning in this case, subtraction. So when you subtract one uh, y value from the previous one, you get the same answer every time. Make sure your x value is just changing by one for that to be true, though. And so we can apply that to the others. Obviously, this is an exponential and this is a quadratic. And what we'll see is that these don't have a constant difference. So this test right here will tell you if the thing is linear. Here, the difference 2 minus 1 is 1, 4 minus 2 is 2, 8 minus 4 is 4. We can see that that difference is changing each time. Same thing over here. 1 minus 0 is 1, 4 minus 1 is 3, 9 minus 4 is 5. So neither of these uh, can be linear because the difference is not constant. It changes. For an exponential function, we've already tried to see if it has a constant difference, and that's uh, not the case for this one. So in this one, we're going to look for what's called a constant factor. So constant, again, means unchanging, and factor in this case referring to something where we're multiplying. So the way we do, or the way we check for this, is by dividing, not subtracting, but dividing uh, our previous number against that one. So here, as example, we would take 2 divided by 1 is 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So we're divide, or we're multiplying rather by the same number each time. Here you'll see that's not the case. 1 divided by 0, well that doesn't even work, right? 4 divided by 1 is 4. 9 divided by 4 is going to be 2.25. Uh, yeah, this just, it doesn't work out. That's not what's happening here. Um, so we can safely say that this is not exponential and it's not linear, which leads us to a quadratic. So for a quadratic, it doesn't have a constant difference. We've already tested that. It doesn't have a constant factor. We tested that on it too. So what we're going to look for is what's called a constant second difference. So constant, sorry, I can't talk and write at the same time. A constant second difference. And here's what I mean by that. I can find the difference by subtracting these. 1 minus 0 is 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. 9 minus 4 is 5. And now, let me take those answers that I've got and subtract again. 3 minus 1 is 2. 5 minus 3 is 2. And I can continue this forever, and I'm going to get 2 every single time. That is a property of quadratics. They have a constant second difference. So if I subtract this from this and get my answers, and then subtract those the same way I did the other, a lot of stuff to keep track of, those are going to end up being the same, and that's a constant second difference. That's how I uh, distinguish a quadratic. Now, the quick and easy way is if you're asked if it's linear, exponential, or quadratic, and you know it's going to be one of those three, test for a constant difference, test for a constant factor. If it doesn't have either of those, odds are pretty good it's going to be a quadratic. So looking at this, we can test the same way. Like if I want to take one of these and determine if it is linear, exponential, or quadratic, what I can do is if, to test and see if it's linear, see if it has a constant difference. To see if it is exponential, check for a constant factor. And for my quadratic, which is where I'll pick this up, we test for a second difference. So 1 minus 4 is going to be, let's see what, negative 3. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 
1 minus 0 is positive 1. Now if I take negative 1 minus negative 3, I get 2. 1 minus negative 1 is 2. There is my constant second difference. It's quadratic. But as promised, there's another way. We can look for what's called symmetry. If this thing is a quadratic, we'll have some point that is a vertex, and we'll see some numbers repeat. Specifically that 1 right there. And notice it happens at 1 and negative 1. This is showing symmetry about that point which is a vertex. And what's neat is if we extended this down, I bet you can't guess what would go there. Well, that's right, it's a 4. And so these numbers are just going to repeat on either side of wherever that vertex is. If you see that sort of symmetry, you can automatically think quadratic. It's a pretty good bet. So to sum up, linear graphs, always straight lines. Exponential graphs have that banana-like curve, and quadratics are always that U-shaped parabola. Linear equations don't have exponents. Exponential equations do have exponents, and the variable will be in the exponent. And for quadratic equations, you'll have a largest exponent of 2. If we're looking at a linear table, we want a constant difference. That is, we're adding or subtracting the same number each time. Exponential tables will get big really fast or small really fast, uh, and they'll have a constant factor. I'm multiplying or dividing by the same number over and over again. Quadratic tables will show symmetry if the vertex is included in the table, and they'll always have that constant second difference. So now I should be able to give you any of those and ask you to identify which type of problem we're looking at and study hard, work hard, meet with success.